Oh, this is Dwight Norris of fishingnetwork.com. I don't have a great day on the Charles River. Lower, I think it's the lower basin. But anyway, it's near the Esplanade once again. A little closer to the Mass Ave Bridge, kind of in between. Uh, what I wanted to show today is really that I got my telescoping fishing rod off of eBay. You know, nice and cheap, nothing really great. Here it is. It actually barely fits in my uh, backpack because of this super long balancing handle here, which for my purpose currently is not really needed, but it's really effective and it goes well with my, um, my Apple Garcia reel I got here. It's six ball bearings, super smooth. I'm not gonna have any problems with it. It was used. Got it for like 20 bucks. I'm like, great deal. And I filled it up with some six pound test Berkeley braided line. And from what I can see right now, it's pretty strong. I left the office today. I totally forgot to get my, my worms. I was really bummed out. I'm like, ah, oh, I got my worms. I don't want to go back. And if you do something like this, you might run into that situation too. You know, like, coming back what, what, what's he doing what's he forgetting you know I don't want to raise any questions or actually I don't really care but I'm limited for time and I had to I have to make a video as well so that takes even more of my time but you won't have to do that as, so you'll have more time for yourself so as you see here I have it rigged up to go for a worm but I have no worms with me so today I'm gonna pull out this uh, grappola sinky minnow probably backwards because of uh, the way the video is, is done but as you see here the uh, the representative of Arlington Bait and Tackle in Arlington, Massachusetts, told me this would be a good bait I, for a little deeper water. I was really getting it so when I get my inflatable kayak and I go out to a deeper part of the Charles River and I'm trying to get to more of those bass that are in the holes, what I he, keep hearing about when the when it gets really warm outside and the oxygen levels go down, the, the bigger fish go deeper and kind of just hang out for a while and they only come out in the shallows during the night in the early morning hours and feed and they go back into their deep water haunts but since this is a fishing network the dot com show obviously i'm going out at lunchtime or just after work and that's when it's definitely warmer so you might need something that can get under the water rather than on top on top is more when the the bass are running which is right now and you can go over to the different dams in boston but for other general fishing, you'll have to have something that sinks. And this is what I'm gonna to use today. Even though I'm fishing from the shore, I'm just gonna throw it out there because I have nothing else to fish with. So I don't really expect to catch much, but you never know. Every day is different. If you're in the right place at the right time, the right fish <laughs> can bite your bait and make your day. So I'm gonna rig this up. I don't really think you need to watch me put it on, but why not? I'm gonna turn this video off and then splice it with another video, which is gonna show me fishing in a more, um, more um, video catching space, if, if possible. If you don't see that, then it means one, I didn't catch a big fish, or two, I just couldn't find a place to put the phone. So I still haven't got my tripod, tripod uh, set up because I don't know how to really carry it in this current bag that I'm using. So I also found another thing I thought about was when I looked up fishing backpacks, I was looking for something that would capture this, would uh, be able to carry this bigger rod without actually having it bulge out the side a little bit. And I noticed most of the fishing backpacks are made to look like fishing backpacks. They have all the compartments and the things for your drinks and things for your lures and paperwork and things to store fish and stuff, but they are actually big. They're the same size as, as if of, uh, of any other backpack. So if you have like a larger rod, and I found out Yes, I can actually bike to some great piers and other spots for surf fishing on the ocean. But I can't fish my, I can't actually fit my surf rod in here and store it. So, how's that going to help somebody who fishes at work? It sounds like something new needs to be created. So I'm going to be looking into that, and once I have some more insight and the possibility and cost and what's actually needed in a fishing backpack other than what I think is needed and what you think is needed, then I'll see what I can do. 
I'm a purveyor of making products that are better for the customer and high quality products, not, not crap. Nobody wants to buy crap. Nobody should buy crap. Yet, yet we, people do all the time because there's nothing else available. So why not make something better? So I'm gonna work some stuff out, look at some specs and I might throw some data at you and just ask for your honest opinion. And that would be great, greatly appreciated. So let's get this thing right on. Oh, no, no, no. Always come prepared so you don't have to do this stuff during your valuable fishing time. And I guess I need my pliers as well. You're definitely not going to cut this braid line easily with your teeth, so don't even try it. It's even hard with a, these pliers. So when you do no, cut your line, the make sure you collect it and put it in a proper trash receptacle. Don't be one of those people who just throw stuff in the ground and expect the world to absorb it. As we've seen all the uh, trash that's been collecting on the shoreline, like in our last video, and also in a certain deep water haunt just offshore of California, which is, seems to be the world's trash can. It's where all the flows seem to go. And, well, the world's not getting any less polluted, despite what people say. Nobody's changing anything they're doing. I actually haven't bought a Rapular lure in a long time. This one was actually quite expensive, so I'll be a little sad if I lose it. <laughs> I want to make sure this puppy is tied on tight and that I don't cast it near anything too bad. I mean, I guess that's where the fish are, where I don't want to cast it. Uh, if anybody sees this and they've noticed the sound quality hasn't improved since you watched, please remind me to get a microphone built for iPhones so that my sound will, will be um, picked up better over a distance and it will drown out other things. Also remind me to get something that cuts braided line better. Man, that's not... Good. Butter. Just don't want the fish to see it. There we go. That's it. We are hooked up. All I need to do is pull this puppy out. Drop the line. One thing with telescopic rods, make sure you do your best to get the guides as straight as possible. Just don't pull out. If you have a cheap telescopic rod, make sure you don't pull too hard, otherwise you might pull the whole rod apart. There we go. Because uh, if, if, if your guides are straight, then it'll be easier to cast. You can cast further, and there's less a possibility of getting, getting it hung in a guide and having to swing back around and possibly hurt you like with these treble hooks I have here. So, I'm all ready to go. I will be turning this back on if something cool happens. Thanks for tuning in. Oh yeah, let me show you the uh, full length. I think it's six feet, so. There it is, along with the Boston skyline. <laughs>
Well, as I stated before, I'll tell you if I actually got something. And we got our first bass on this new bait. Apparently, I don't need live bait for everything. It's a quick update, I'll splice it in. Thank you. So, we've come in to the end of our fishing trip and I caught one bass and I missed three strikes. Two I couldn't see and, and one I saw and it just decided to give up on it in the last second. It got near the shoreline so it slowed down. You probably saw what it was or saw me on the other. That's fine. Still caught a pass. I wasn't skunked and had a great day. Uh, I did see one pretty big bass, probably about three pounds. And then I discovered that when my bait actually hit him in the back and he ran away, that he was a male fish protecting its young, which are floating right in front of me now. I don't know how easily you can see these. They're right there. And over here. And he's just roaming around protecting them and I'm gonna leave him, I'm gonna leave him alone. Let him do his job as a father instead of catching them and releasing them and taking a lot of, a lot of his energy for the uh, sunfish try to eat his young, which is not good. Or maybe that's not the bass's young. Maybe it's, maybe it's the panfish. The bluegills I'm watching some right next to it right now. I don't know. Actually, no, here's the bass again. He's, he's pulled up right next to the shoreline. It's definitely protecting his young. Okay, so that's it for today. I'm going to put all three of these videos together and make a nice complete set for today's fishing adventure. Now, remember, you get out there, you do the same thing, thanks to your job, and catch some fish.